the distinct impression that you guys wanted me to try Home Assistant. I can't think why that would be. Paul, have I got a Home Assistant? You should have tried Home Assistant. If you had Home Assistant, you wouldn't have this problem. Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant. One of you even went as far as to use reverse psychology and say, it's not really for you. You're not really smart or patient enough. I do like you, you're just not very smart or patient. Thanks. That's like saying, you're a massive dumbass! You're the biggest dumbass I've ever seen on YouTube! I like you, but you're a massive dumbass! What an idiot! So I fell for the reverse psychology, obviously, because I am a massive dumbass. So I've gone down the rabbit hole of home assistance, and I've drawn a great many, many conclusions. Please wait until the end of the video to have a go at me. Because seriously, there is a lot to talk about here. What even is Home Assistant? You like to ask big questions, don't you? In simple terms, Home Assistant is a way to get your Philips Hue stuff to respond when your IKEA stuff does something. For example, you can get stuff to talk to each other without using the internet. So if you've heard of if, this, then, that, that's the same thing, but you are reliant on somebody's server on the internet. If you buy yourself a Raspberry Pi and install Home Assistant on it, then you're not reliant on anybody. It is so much more than that, and it is so much better than if, this, then, that. The question is, is it worth the effort? The setup process was flawless, thanks to the amazing Dr. Z... Dr. Z... Dr. Z... Dr. Seuss? The Raspberry Pi will make you cry unless you watch this guy. Is that a Dr. Zeus? I've never read a, a book. All you've got to do is visit the Home Assistant website, download some files from there, burn them onto a tiny little fiddly stupid micro SD card using some software called Etcher, and then plug that micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi. That's literally it. Once you boot the thing up, you'll be able to visit Home Assistant's config pages by simply going to homeassistant.local colon 8123. Once Home Assistant has finished its initial setup, it will go, oh, I know what that is, that's a Philips Hue. And then it will go, oh, I know what that is, that's a Lifex. And it will literally just find everything and then immediately allow you to control those things. This is incredible. I am honestly so pleased with the initial setup. I, I was kind of like, <laughs> what is that? The layout of Home Assistant is beautifully done. If you want to go and put stuff in a room, it can be a little bit time consuming. It's not that well thought out. But once you've actually completed the whole, that belongs in that room, that belongs in that room, you've got a really nice dashboard that is totally customizable that you can control all of the things in your house. And there's an app to go with it. So if you put the app on your phone, you've got the same switches in the palm of your hand, wherever you are. Things were going great. Within the space of an hour, I'd got a dashboard on my Windows PC that could control all of the devices in my house. I'd got an app on my phone which could do the same. I'd even created a couple of automations so that when my main lights were switched off, the rest of my room would switch off, all thanks to Home Assistant. I'm going, oh God, wow, everyone was right. Home Assistant is the best. Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant. And I'm looking at my panel going, Hang on a minute, where's my Broadlink RM Pro stuff? And it hasn't discovered it. Home Assistant, where is my Broadlink RM Pro stuff? Wait a minute, where's my Lightwave RF light switch and plug sockets? None of those things have been discovered. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate the guys that make Home Assistant are incredible human beings, and they can't do everything in the world. They can only code up so much in the time that this thing has been alive. So I start looking to the community because I should be able to go and find some community built stuff and shoehorn that into my Raspberry Pi, whether it likes it or not. So who do I find? But Dr. Z... Dr. Z... We've done that gag. <laughs> and so I look at his YouTube channel and he's got some instructions there that are only about a year old and I'm like, perfect. So the first thing I establish from Dr. Z instructions is that I need to be able to get to a file on the Raspberry Pi called configuration.yaml to make some changes. So I take the SD card out of the Pi and I plug it into Windows and Windows goes, what the f*** is that? 
because it doesn't recognise it anymore. It has been formatted in a way that the Raspberry Pi can understand, but that Windows can't. So I start googling how to access the configuration.yaml file from across the network. Ah uh, good, gobbledygook. It's all gibberish, because the Home Assistant forums are full to the brim with nerds! They're lovely nerds, don't get me wrong, but imagine trying to learn English from someone that was speaking in Cockney rhyming slang. Okay, well I don't know what they mean by that, I'll have to Google that. Okay, I don't know what they mean by that, I'll have to Google that. Don't know what they mean by that, I'll have to Google That's what this is! You have to reverse engineer what the hell that means, and then reverse engineer what the hell that means. I'll cut a long story short before people start going, this guy goes on a bit, bye bye. I figured out how to enable Samba on the Pi, I can get to the configuration.yaml files, but the whole core underlying functionality of Home Assistant has completely changed since those instructions were made. If anyone knows how to get the Broadlink RM Pro working with the current version of Home Assistant, let me know in the comments, because I still fully want to get behind this. I love Home Assistant so far, and I do want to learn more. Google Home and She That Should Not Be Named are two companies who want to know everything about you. They're mental! The problem with this is that Home Assistant's core foundational values are privacy and keeping things within your control. This is great, but unfortunately I think Home Assistant is going through a bit of an identity crisis. I want to be private, but I do like humans. I want to be private, but I do like to be popular! I want to be private, but I do want to remain competitive! You can implement Google Home and She That Should Not Be Named using two methods. The first method is become Dennis Nedry. If you are a massive nerd, you can set up a VPN tunnel to the outside world, to the cloud, and create your own She That Should Not Be Named skill using your Amazon developer account. You're not going to do it. The second option is to actually pay a subscription of $5 a month. That's almost the cost of Netflix. $5 a month to a gentleman who has created all this stuff for you. I am really pleased that he has done that. It is great that that option exists. I am not knocking him in the slightest. What I am telling you is, if you want to go to Home Assistant, go with your eyes open. Connecting all of these things within your Home Assistant hub to She That Should Not Be Named and Google Assistant is super easy, but it's going to cost you a load of money. Before I wrap up, there is one important point of note here, just a tiny little detail. Everything I've done so far has changed nothing! Literally nothing at all! Because I am still reliant on my Philips Hue hub, uh, I am still reliant on Toya Smart Life's server in order to connect my devices and make them work, which means I am still reliant on my internet connection, and nothing I have done so far has helped my privacy situation at all. In order to take this to the next level and have everything properly localised, I would have to replace my Philips Hue hub with a Zigbee dongle, which would be a slightly more expense and lots more time. If I wanted to get my Toya Smart Life stuff to work locally so I was no longer reliant on the internet, I would have to actually hack every single one of my plug sockets and light bulbs so that it had got new special firmware on it and then learn a load more stuff in Home Assistant. This is all very, very basic what I've done so far, but unfortunately, almost entirely pointless. Home Assistant fans, stop pressing that dislike button. I haven't finished. If you've got a lot of time on your hands, this is so much fun. I don't personally have the time to sit down and keep tinkering away at it and messing about trying to get Broadlink working and get me Lightwave RF switch working and figuring out the whole VPN tunnel thing so I can do the She That Should Not Be Named stuff for free. Personally, I spend 80 hours a week working. 40 hours on this, 40 hours on my day job. If you are a busy person, this is not going to be for you. If you are interested in tech and you want to feel the satisfaction that comes from taking the control away from Philips Hue, this is great fun. I just wish I had more time for it. Do I recommend Home Assistant? Sounds weird, we're talking about free software. I'm normally reviewing things that are physical. Um, the answer to that question is yes, I absolutely do, if you've got the time to tinker around. If you are looking for off-the-shelf solutions where you don't have to play around with stuff to make it work, Hobbitat will kick this thing's butt. It's hardly any more expensive either. If you don't enjoy the process of tinkering and taking back control, 
Hubitat will take back control on your behalf. Um, it's already got a Zigbee dongle that it comes with and a Z-Wave dongle that it comes with. Those things work off the bat and the software is in place to learn your Zigbee devices and get everything up and running. If you don't want to do the tinkering with Home Assistant, Hubitat is your way forwards. Not to mention the fact that Hubitat works with She That Should Not Be Named, Google Home, and If This Then That with no subscription at all. Eventually, you're going to have saved money by not investing in Home Assistant as it stands. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. I'll show you some other smart home stuff. Uh, these guys are my patrons from Patreon. They keep these videos happening week by week. If you want to come and be one of these guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I'll love you forever. These are my social medias, my Facebooks, my Twitters, and my Instagrams. We can be best friends there. Come and hang out. See you soon. Let me tell you what the Raspberry Pi is. Let me not stand on those. Let me start again. The Raspberry Pi will make you cry unless you watch Dr. Z's YouTube channel. <laughs> it's not found my light wave. <laughs>